Hello, hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Joe's Ventures, and today we're doing another episode of a Jurassic World Evolution 2 Mod Spotlights, where we take a look at some of the wonderful mods people have been making and compare them to their real-life fossil counterparts. So today we've got a quite an interesting assortment of animals, we've got some remasters, some animals that keep coming back, you know, uh, like that, but we've got some couple new animals, we've got a lot of Tyrannosaurs today, so I know... A lot of you Tyrannosaur or Theropod fans will be very happy with that. But first, we're going to be starting off with an early relative of the uh, Tyrannosaurs. So this first mod is Guanlong. So this was made by Haswok Tree. So we're going to have a look at this really nice mod. Here we are. So this is Hogwarts Trees uh, Guanlong. And it's doing the thing again. Of course it does. That's a bug that it packs nearly all the time. So I think this should be fixed. Anyway, we have got Guanlong right here. So Guanlong is a genus of extinct Proceratosaurid tyrannosauroid, tyrannosauroid uh, dinosaur that comes from the late Jurassic of China. So as I mentioned, it was uh, Tyrannosaurus, so it is an early relative, early Jurassic relative of T-Rex, along with like Proceratosaurus. So it may likely had feathers, you can kind of see there. But it was first discovered in the Zhongura area of China, with scientists from the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology, and the George Washington University, and was named by Zhu Jing and others in 2006. So Guanlong itself comes from the Chinese words crown and dragon. So Guanlong means crown dragon. And the specific species, uh, uh, Wenkai, I believe say that, means multicolored, which refer refers to the rocks of where it was found, which were multicolored, as in multiple hues. So it's basically the multicolored dragon crown, or the mul uh, dragon crown multicolored, you could say. Or the multicolored crown dragon, that sounds good. So, at present, there's only two specimens known of Guanlong. So, one was discovered on top of each other with 300 individual theropod dinosaurs. So, the holotype is an adult skeleton that's partly articulated and most of be complete. And then there's another being uh, that's more immature that's been returned to it. Uh, and it was proved to be trampled by death by the adult. And the uh, crest on the uh, immature specimen seems to be a lot smaller than the adult. So, that means it was most likely for some sort of sexual display. And uh, adults probably had larger ones. And the crest itself, as you can see on the face here, was most likely very thin. Uh, almost like the castle, a bit like a cassowary. And so these may have been for display, so maybe uh, more displays rather than actually using them to uh, cram into things. That's cool. So Guanlong itself was a relatively small theropod, though I know everyone thinks theropods or dinosaurs are huge. So it's, uh, most dinosaurs were pretty big. Uh, it, just as an animal, it's pretty big. Like, that's still bigger than most animals alive, even in the Jurassic. Uh, about 3 to 3.5 three meters, or about 9 to 11 me uh, feet, and weighed about 125 kilograms, or just under 300 pounds of body mass. Its fossils were found in the Shinjuku Formation and from the Oxfordian of the Lake Jurassic, so about 160 million years ago. 92 million years before its relative T Rex. So there's more time that's passed between uh, uh, between T-Rex and us, or the iPhone, than uh, Guanlong and T-Rex itself. So that shows you how long dinosaurs have been around for. So this bipedal Sariscian theropod shared many traits with a lot of like its relatives as well, but also it's a very unusual one. So like the three fingers, they, the Tyrannosaurids didn't lose their two, uh, third finger yet, so they still had three fingers, as you can kind of see there. They also had this large crest, uh, and three long fingers as well, uh, which and maybe so very similar relative to animals like Dilong and also Proceratosaurus, uh, since they would mostly had feathers, uh, they thought it'd be a weird coat, uh, feathers. So in a recent study, they actually found that uh, Guanlong clades quite closely with Proceratosaurus and uh, Calosaurus and formed the family Proceratodontidae with a clade that included Sonotyrannus Shoshonostoxosaurus. However, another study in 2014 published that um, this group only includes Calisus, Proceratus, and Sinotyrannus, which is interesting. And some other facts about the paleobiology. The age of the two individuals actually is determined. So the adult was actually matured at about seven years of age and may have died about 12 years old. And the individual was died at six but was still growing. 
And having these two different individuals allow you to look at the difference between growth and the juvenile, the quest, uh, the, not the, the quest, the crest is actually quite restricted to the snout and shorter. And the orbit is larger, very similar to things like that, and less expanded. And there are many other features that are found in more derived Slurosaurs and Tyrannosaurids. So that shows that they were definitely a relative of T-Rex, even though they don't look like it, and other Slurosaurs. Even though they look more like a Dilophosaurus or a Ceratosaurid. Uh, Guanlong itself also possessed a cranial crest, which had been used for display, similar to those of like Dilophosaurus and Modilophosaurus. It was highly pneumatized, which means it was hollow. And it was having more delicate than other genera. And potentially larger or more elaborate and they may have used these for just display purposes to be able to like find mates very much a cask of a cassowary is another great example very likely for display but anyway really really cool one so let uh, the guanlong go out so we've got another animal coming up we've got one by master doot so another wonderful master doot mod uh, we have got bear shalong So you can find one standing in the corner that's not being a weirdo. Let's see where's Let's have a look at you. You're pretty, I like I like this color of this one. So we'll have a look at you. So Biao Shalong, uh, as you can see here, is a genus of giant ornithomimosaurian theropods, so related to ornithomimus and Dinochirus and all those guys. And it's actually the second largest ornithomimosaur discovered. Uh, second only to the great big Dinochirus, which is interesting. So the fossils, uh, there's three fossils known of Biao Shalong, which was found in the early 21st century in northwestern China at the White, White Coast Castle site in Ganshu. Uh, the type species is Biao Shalong grandis, which was described and named online in 2009 by a team of both Chinese and American po uh, po paleontologists, and then was described in 2010. Uh, Quite a few interesting amounts, a lot of uh, uh, American and Chinese paleontologists, which is cool. The name means itself the Bei Shan, which is the North Mountains, where it was found. And Long is, as we mentioned with Guan Long, word for dragon. So it's basically the North Mountain Dragon. And Grandis just means a large in Latin. So it's the large uh, Bei Shan, uh, last Bei Shan dragons, or the North Mountain Dragon. The large North Mountain Dragon, that's what it is. So it's believed to have lived in the late Aptian stage, uh, with fossils being uncovered around the executable group formation. So that time is about 123 to 113 million years ago, so that tells you its age. The holotype itself uh, contains a partial skeleton lacking the skull, but there are paratypes with two other specimens that have hindlands and things like that. Uh, so there's about four different fossils referred to be Shalong. So in terms of its size, as I mentioned, it approaches the largest size of like the largest Calamimus, which has been estimated to be about 8 meters long. And according to the description, it's one of the largest uh, definitive ornithomimosaurs yet to date, that the histolo uh, histology shows that Biao Shalong was potentially still growing. So it could have gotten a bit bigger. And the histology shows that the 13, 14 growth line, so it means a subadult, the growth had slowed, so it wasn't going to get much bigger. It's estimated the subadult individual was about 5 0.9 to 7 meters or 9 to 23 feet and between 375 and 626 kilograms or about 800 pounds uh, to 1300 pounds of body mass though as I mentioned as sub adults would have likely gotten maybe a little bit bigger potentially maybe another meter or so but we don't really know until we have an adult specimen it's also rather robust with uh, long arms and long legs though it had quite elongated hand didn't have quite the elongated hands of later uh, later on with the Mimus source. So Bayo Shalong was actually described a lot to be much baser, more basal in the Ornithomimosauria and was found to be related to the Ornithomimosaurian Hap Happy Mimus. Though together they formed a polytomy, which is like, we don't know where the exact original ancestor came from, just below Gradual Mimus. But in 2014, it was actually found to be a member of Dinochiridae and uh, containing uh, Dinochirus and Gradual Mimus. So that's very interesting. So it shows it is a relative of uh, Dinochirus as of now. But yeah, really, really cool model. I like that we got the feathers on. I cannot love seeing some feathers. Speaking of feathers, now we've got a mod done by Wheat. Everyone loves Wheat. Uh, this is kind of a 
more just a cosmetic mod that adds to the Utah Raptor. So I'll, I'll probably just cut that out. But we'll have a look at some of the wonderful skins we've got going on here. So let's have a look at you. Look at you. I like this one. So this is Utah Raptor that was done by Wheat. So the original Utah Raptor in the game was actually pretty spot on for the most part. But this kind of just really makes it hyper accurate. So a lot of the changes that um, Wheat has made is that the tail is a bit shorter. The body, as you can see, is quite a bit bulkier and the head's bulkier as well. That just really makes it fit the proper anatomy of uh, Utah Raptor. Uh, the pubic bone's a lot more obvious, as you can kind of see here. It's huge, big body's huge. Uh, there's a list of changes as well. The first finger is shorter, but has a longer claw as well. So you can see some of those changes as well. Uh, the tertiary feathers have been removed as well, uh, adjusting the feather rigging, which is also interesting. <coughs> and also did the body's been made a bit wider. So this is a little bit more hyper accurate to what uh, it would look like. But not just that. Um, Utah Raptor, this wheat has added a lot more skins, so there's a few skins. I believe this one comes from one of the Jurassic Park, like, Chaos games, or uh, one. There's, like, one Fossil Fighter one that's, like, purple. I believe it's Fossil Fighter, at least. Uh, there's one with the Walking with Dinosaurs color, you know, the yellow with, like, the black uh, spots on it. Uh, or the black lines on it. That's the one of the things as well. There's one that just looks like a uh, falcon. So there's... Uh, that changes to the anatomy, but also all the changes to uh, the eight cosmetics that come with it. So it's a very interesting mod, and Wheat does always a good job. I love seeing it. You can see, I you probably can't notice the differences too much unless you look at them side by side. But you can see just how much more like Utah Raptor this looks, even from the one in the, that was already in the game, which is pretty good. So this is just, like, puts the icing on the cake, and it really feels like Utah Raptor. I especially love this skin, because it really... Feels a much more realistic skin with like the browns and all that. So we always has done a wonderful job. Definitely really, really great. So we're gonna let you run off and do your thing. And next up we've got Torvosaurus. Uh, we all love Torvosaurus. So this one is done by Jagged Fang Designs, uh, who's come back to give us some wonderful mods. So we'll let it open and have a look at Torvosaurus. So this is Torvosaurus, as I mentioned. We'll have a look at you while you're standing here. So this is Torvosaurus tanneri, which is a particular species. So Torvosaurus itself is a large megalosaurus, related to Megalosaurus, uh, that lived during the uh, Carbonian and Tithonian, or the middle to late Jurassic, about 165 to 148 million years ago, and lived in a lot of places around the world, from Colorado, Portugal, Germany, and even potentially into Spain, uh, Uruguay, and places like that. And there are currently two named species. So Torvosaurus tanneri was the first one. This is the American one. And Gurnii, which was named after James Gurney, who's quite a famous paleo artist, lived in Portugal. So uh, the first remains of uh, Torvosaurus were found in 1899 by Elmore Riggs in the Friesau Hills in southern Wyoming. And uh, it was actually rediscovered. There was thought to be something else, but then it was found to be... Described as Torvosaurus tenorium, seen described in 2014. So the first kind of uh, what we have from Tenerai uh, is basically found in Colorado at the Calico uh, Gulch Quarry, which was from a single thumb. And they thought it would be from Supersaurus remains were found as well, Dromus Quarry. And the site was excavated and gave the name Torvosaurus tenorai, which was described by Peter Malcolm Galton and Jensen. So the genus name Torvosaurus means savage, a uh, lizard. So Torvos means savage, uh, Saurus means lizard. And um, the Tanneri comes from the first counselor of the search, uh, Nathan Elder Tanner, which was the first presidency of the uh, counselor, or the first presidency of the Je uh, Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints. So that's pretty interesting as well. But there's also mentioned so much more. There's also Omaka Rex and Brontoraptor, which are kind of larger, being lumped into larger specimens of Torvos, uh, Torvosaurus tanneri 
and other big claws that have been uh, put into that. Though they, they're they pretty much considered adult size, are quite big, about 11 to 12 meters. But yeah, the Torvosaurus is a little bit of a uh, mess uh, taxonomically because there's lots of species lumped into it. So Torvosaurus itself is quite a large robust predator. So it has an estimated body mass of about 10 to 11 meters, about 4 to 5 tons for Gurnii, which is the uh, Portugal one. And even uh, there have been claims that made the American species uh, Tanneri was actually comparable on length. So up to 12 meters and 4 tons based on Eumarca rex and Brontoraptor. But the most uh, confirmed sizes that we have for Tanneri was about 9 meters and about 2 metric tons, which is interesting. But it's very possible they could go up bigger because of Eumarca rex and things like that. Not too many differences between them. There's a lot of them are very minor differences that you looked at the anatomy, which I'm not going to go too much into. But as I mentioned, it's a Torvosaurus. Uh, Torvosaurus is a Megalosaurid. It's related to Megalosaurus and those kind of animals. You should have to Spondylus as the kind of an earlier relative, uh, those animals. But yeah, very interesting as well. And we actually know a lot about Torvosaurus as well, which is cool. We found baby uh, eggs from what's assumed to be Torvosaurus and Locarina formation as well. And uh, which is... Uh, attributed to them, so with dinosaur eggs and embryos, so we have a look at what the babies look like. And um, they seem to be the most primitive known, and they're only basic theropods, and it seemed they almost, uh, they not known if they provided parental care, so they potentially kind of just buried them and kind of walked away, like very much like sea turtles. And also as well, from the Morrison formation, we have a lot of uh, things about their ecology as well. So uh, most of the specimens that come from Torvosaurus and Morrison are a similar sized, even the marker of and things like that, because they were lumped as different species. So it's very possible that we don't have that, actually. And it's believed to be because the, the fossil uh, record is actually known for preserving large vertebrates um, and smaller ones. Immature individuals may have had different niches from adults and then occupied different habitats. And it's believed they also could have uh, just... The uh, babies could have preferred habitats where they just didn't, like, Fossilizations just happen as readily. And um, it seems they may have experienced a type B1 uh, population survivorship. So once they reach uh, mortality increased after sexual maturity was achieved and had abundant mature individuals in the fossil record, uh, which is kind of unlikely considering what the Loharina formation once suggests. They may have just laid a whole bunch of eggs and walked away like sea turtles. And the final possibility is that an immature Torvosaurus may just be misidentified. But because we're talking about Tanneri, the particular species here, so studies have found that in the paleo environment of the Morrison Formation, it lived with all sorts of very, very famous dinosaurs like uh, Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Supersaurus, Camarasaurus, Dryosaurus, Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Ornithalestes, Stegosaurus, and all those really cool animals. And it was a very rich formation as well. It was considered a semi desert or semi arid. Uh, but had things like algae and uh, horsetails, ferns, cycads, and lots of conifer trees. Also found lots of fishes and sphenodonts, which are the extinct relatives of Tuatara, which live in New Zealand today. Uh, amphibians, lots of frogs, even Sicilians, uh, crocodilomorphs, lots of pterosaurs, and lots of early, early mammals as well. As well. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So we are going to let you run off and do your thing. So that was done by Jagged Fang Designs. Next up, we're going to the lagoon. We've got a really cool animal in here. So we've got here Protostego, done by Jojo Chess. Swim out of there. Yeah. I don't want to deal with guests at the moment. We'll have a look at you. You're quite pretty. We'll let you. We'll look at you like that. Okay, so this is Protostega. So Protostega is an extinct genus of giant sea turtle, which is known from a single species, Protostega gigas. And its fossils have been found in the Smoky Hill, Chan Kansas, uh, Chalk of Kansas. And dated to about 83 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. And uh, found in companion rocks as well. So it's quite well known. And found in Russia too. So the first specimen was uh, collected on the four July the 4th. Uh, an 1871 Yale uh, College Scientific Expedition. Uh, close to Fort Wallace and about five months before Cope arrived in Kansas. 
Well, the fossil had been never uh, named or described and, uh, and named, and then it wasn't until uh, Edward Drinker Cope actually found it and named it, uh, collected the first specimen in 1871. And a variety of bones were found in the yellow Cretaceous chalk of the bluff near Butte Creek, which is quite interesting as well. So very interesting as well, uh, Protostag is actually considered the second largest giant sea turtle, uh, second only to Archelon. So Protostag is believed to have reached about 3 to 3.9 meters, uh, or about 9 to 12 feet long, though there's potentially specimens that got up to about 2, 4.2 meters in total length. And um, you're looking at its head, it's got a very interesting head, It's uh, also its carapace as well is interesting. So its uh, shell had a reduced ossification, so there was much less bone. Its shell was much more similar to things like a leatherback, uh, and the carapace was completely reduced because of that, uh, very much as well. But the skull actually looks very interesting. It has a much shorter beak, beak than things like Archelon, and seems to have been much more similar to Chilo most members of Chilona Day in terms of their anatomy. So very much something to like a loggerhead or a hawksbill. And is believed to be, these were omnivorous, so they were able to eat uh, potentially hard-shelled crustaceans, but also potentially eating uh, seaweed and jellyfish like modern sea turtles. So that's quite interesting as well. So the habitat it lived in was the Western Terrier Seaway. So in the late Cretaceous, America was divided into uh, basically through the middle by the Western Terrier Seaway, which was covered the majority of North America. And this is where the most uh, fossils have been found, but I mentioned there's also been some found in Russia. In terms of its classification, it's been complicated, but most recent evidence suggests they should share characteristics and are actually between uh, de Dermocelles, which is the group that includes things like uh, the Leatherbacks, and between Chelonidae. So they're not that closely related to like things like Archelon, but they're kind of in between Dismachelis, which is uh, Leatherback sea turtles, and your typical rest of the sea turtles like Greens, Hawkbills, Loggerheads, things like that. So that's quite interesting. So examining, examining the bones as well, actually these guys actually have a similar growth structure to uh, leatherback sea turtles as well, uh, and rapid, grow quite rapidly, which is interesting because uh, leatherback sea turtles don't have a typical metabolism compared to uh, most other sea turtles. So uh, leatherback sea turtles are considered gigantotherms, so because they swim so much they can actually keep heat, they basically generate heat through their muscles and then preserve it in their body because of their large size but also their blubber, so that allows them to have a higher body temperature than the water around them. And this suggests that Protostega may have had a similar system that allowed them to uh, have that similar metabolism and grow a bit faster. Uh, this means they would grow uh, very much faster and actually potentially have an advantage. However, compared to like uh, Dismatocellis, which is a relative of Protostega and more basal, uh, it seems like not all of them had this growth, so it may have been something that may have evolved multiple times or may have evolved uh, once and then other species lost it. It's kind of that always question, did they have it originally or did they evolve it multiple times is a big question always in evolution. And this indicates that rapid growth and large size evolved later in the lineage, potentially, which means they could have uh, been a good adaption against things like Mosasaurs and Tylosaurs. Uh, but we don't really know. It could have been either convergent or potentially uh, it been more basal, so we really don't know. But yeah, still really, really cool. Nice protostega. Uh, nice to see some more giant sea turtles and more lagoon animals. How can you not love your lagoon animals? Oh, what a cutie too. So there we are, done with these guys. So next up, we have got another mod by Master Dude. We've got everyone's favourite Big bad Jurassic and Matic Carnivore. So here we've got Sora Fake and Axe. So here he is. Look at this beautiful guy. We'll have a look at you because you're quite beautiful. So this is Sora Fake and Axe. So Sora Fake and Axe is a genus of large allosaur from the Morrison of the late Jurassic. In, found in Oklahoma. So it was first discovered in 1931 and 1942, uh, 32 I mean, and covered a large theropod in Oklahoma from Lake Cameridgean. Its original name was actually Saurophagus maximus, which is interesting, which Saurophagus means lizard eater, uh, and the large, or maximus, it means the largest uh, lizard eater. But actually it was actually discovered that Saurophagus was actually used by uh, the tyrant uh, flycatcher so it's a type of bird. Um, so um, 
And then 1995, after that, it was re-described as Sora Faganax, which means the ruler of the Lizard Eaters. So it's basically the lord of the Lizard Eaters now, which is quite interesting. And it's actually the official state fossil of Oklahoma as well. And a large skeleton of Sora Faganax can be seen in the San Nobel Oklahoma Museum of Natural History, although it's not really known from that much good material. And before we get into that, there's also a lot of taxonomic uh, um, debate of it, whether it was potentially its own species of Allosaurus, Allosaurus maximus, potentially an adult Allosaurus fragilis, uh, or whether it was its own genus. We really don't know. Uh, most recent suggest that most potentially extinct genus, and there's more material that could clear it up. But right now, uh, we really don't know. It's just kind of considered its own genus. But some consider it just an adult Allosaurus, because we don't find many adult Allosaurus fragilis. But potentially, it could also be its own species or its own genus. We really don't know. So it's the largest carnivore in that Morrison ecosystem, bigger than both Torvosaurus tannerai, as I mentioned, and Allosaurus, at about 10.5 meters, or about 30 feet long, 34 feet long, and weigh between 2.7 to 3.8 metric tons in body mass. So in terms of paleoecology, it would have lived in the Morrison Formation at about 146 to 156 million years ago, around that time. So around the late Oxfordian, Comerchian, and Antithonian stages where it lived in the Morrison. As I mentioned, home of very famous animals like Stegosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, all those guys, as I kind of mentioned before. And the bite marks of uh, Allosaurus and Myropalto have actually been found on these guys. And they were bigger, uh, the bite uh, marks were actually found to be bigger than any Allosaurus or Ceratosaurus known. So it's either believed to be an unusually large Allosaurus or a separate taxon like Torvosaurus or Saurophaganax. We potentially do have bite marks from Saurophaganax, which is interesting. So yeah, another really, really cool animal. So next up after this, so this was Master Dude, uh, did this one. We've also got another one by Master Dude that we're going to post uh, and have a look. Get a little release. So here we've got Gorgosaurus. Look at this wonderful guy. We'll have a look at the one that has the walking with dinosaur skin. This is really cool. I like the skin. I think it came out well. The movie sucked, but I like the skin. So, Gorgosaurus, which means dreadful lizard, is a genus of Tyrannosaurus that lived in Western North America during the late Cretaceous, around the Campanian, between about 76 to 75 million years ago. And fossils have been found in Alberta, but also in Montana. And is recognized as a single species, uh, Gorgosaurus libranensis, uh, with other species have been referred to, but now it's just one at the moment. So as mentioned, it was first discovered by Lawrence Lambie in 1914, and the genus name means terrible or fierce lizard, or dreadful lizard, so the balanced dreadful lizard as well. The holotype is, uh, was discovered in 1913 by Charles M. Sternberg as well, as well. And we do have quite a good amount of idea what it looked like. We do have quite a few specimens. There was uh, other species like Denodon, which is actually lumped to it as well uh, from teeth and there's also several specimens that show injuries and pathologies like a brain tumor one that has fractured ribs and uh, leg uh, which is really cool as well so yeah in terms of uh, its size it was smaller than Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus uh, closer in size to Albertosaurus and probably got to about eight to nine meters long and weighed about two to three metric tons the largest skull that we have from uh, Gorgosaurus is about 99 centimeters, which is just slightly smaller than Diplodocus, and has a much more leaner build compared to Diplodocus, and uh, longer and lower skull compared to Diplodocus as a winner too, because we've got Diplodocus next. Uh, very very interesting animal, and is in these was originally classified in the subfamily Albertosaurinae within the family Tyrannosaurus, so it's, it seems to be most closely related to the younger Albertosaurus. So that's where it is. It's kind of like an early relative of Albertosaurus. But then some other uh, phylogenies have kind of uh, potentially to lump them. So sometimes uh, Albertosaurus is considered the same as Gorgosaurus, which is interesting as well. So that's because Albertosaurus is named first and that takes priority. Uh, but a lot of uh, recent uh, people pretty much all keep them uh, separate. Uh, at the moment, but there is a case potentially to lump them because they uh, a lot of people do. But 
it just depends on who you ask that's taxonomy for you but they are related to each other and they're just outside tyrannosaurine so uh a tyrannosaurine so that a little bit earlier than things like dispethosaurus and lithonax and things like that so in terms of its diet and feeding uh like other tyrannosaurids uh they would have had uh uh increased uh they would grow slowly as young individuals and then around like juvenile stage or their teenager years they would have grown really fast it seems they would have had a bite force of at least twenty-two thousand and potentially up to 242,000 newtons so they would have uh had quite a um nice bite force so it would have been comparable to a similar size tyrannosaurus so still quite a big bite so a big gorgosaurus would have the same bite force as potentially a, a nine meter long tyrannosaurus as well and there's been more research suggesting they could have had a bite force of up to 13,000 newtons, which is huge. And there's actually, in 2023, just last year, there was a study that they looked at uh, a juvenile Gorgosaurus that actually swallowed two Sapatis, which were two ornithomimosaurs. And the juvenile would have been about five to seven years old in depth, at about four meters long, and weighed about 350 uh, kilograms or so. And the two juvenile Sipatis, uh, Cip I believe you say that, is about 92 kilograms. So that actually, uh, contrary to the assumption, they would have fed on uh, prey on their size once they reached uh, 16 to 32 kilograms, kind of like wolves. But they would have pretty much consumed what they could ever get their mouths around. And also this uh, dispels the idea that they may have lived in packs, or at least Gorgosaurus didn't, because there's been an idea of multi-generational packs within Tyrannosaurus. There is some evidence to support that, but this shows that at least Gorgosaurus itself may have not had that and that babies, very similar to Komodo dragons, would have had a different niche to adults. So adult Komodo dragons, you know, the big ones that we all know and love, have a different niche from the babies. The babies live in the trees and eat insects, but once they get bigger, they come down and start to get bigger, bulky, and feed on all the goats and deer and buffalo that the adults do. So very, very likely something uh, uh, similar was happening with Tyrannosaurids. And very similar life history as well, because not as extreme as Tyrannosaurus, but most of those later Tyrannosaurus like Dispedosaurus and Gorgosaurus and Albertosaurus would have had a growth spurt around their late teens. And they would have uh, put on about 50 kilograms per year during that growth stage, which was slower than a lot of uh, Dispedosaurus and Tyrannosaurus, but comparable to Albertosaurus. So they pretty much spend half their life in this juvenile phase or juvenile niche, and then they would have moved over to this adult niche, which is quite interesting. And as I mentioned, there have been lots of injuries found. There's been gastralia broken, uh, arthritis or um, brain tumors and things like that, or calluses uh, on the bone. So this shows that these guys were very active predators, definitely not scavengers, and probably living very active and rough lives. Very similar to crocodiles and things like that. They get injuries all the time. So in terms of the environment it lived in, uh, most specimens of Gorgosaurus actually come from the Dinosaur Park Formation. So this dates from the middle of the Campanian, so about 76 to 74 million years ago, and it's specifically known from the lower formation as well, and formations such as Two Medicine and Judith River may have Gorgosaurus as well. So the habitat itself would have been a coastal plain along the western, at the edge of the western Terry Seaway, and would have divided North America in half, as I mentioned before. There would have been a conifers and formed the canopy with lots of ferns and tree ferns, and lots of very interesting animals lived with it, so lots of fish, Lots of amphibians like frogs and salamanders, turtles and crocodilians as well. There were astarchids and early birds as well living at that time. And lots of other species of lizards and things like that were involved. In terms of the dinosaur life, there would have been lots of herds of ceratopsians and hadrosaurs, both of saurolophine and labrosaurine types. Also other groups like the ornithomimids, therizinosaurids, pachycephalosaurids, ankylosaurids and nodosaurids. There were also small pretty uh, dinosaurs like Cetipades, as I mentioned, uh, Troodontids and Dromaeosaurs. So it had a very rich formation, but then also lived with Dispedosaurus. So I'll get in, I might, I'm not going to repeat myself, I'll do it now. So Dispedosaurus and the Dinosaur Park formation lived with uh, uh, Gorgosaurus. So they would have potentially had different niches. So it's believed to be uh, very similar to modern animals. They won't all eat the same thing. They'll try and specialize to try and avoid competition or not quite as much, but the niches hypothesized that because Gorgosaurus was lighter and uh, more fleet-footed, would have eaten things such as uh, hadrosaurs, and the bigger, bulkier Dispedosaurus would have been fed on ceratopsians and ankylosaurs. Though it's very likely not that black and white, they might have just had a preference for that, and may have also occupied different habitats as well. So Gorgosaurus is more common in northern parts of the formation and more abundant in the south, so they would have likely just preferred different habitats or potentially just ate different things. 
And there actually has been in restricting the kind of uh, reduce that diversity as well. You can see these like Edmontosaurus and Rhesusaurus and Triceratops and Taurosaurus became widespread. And there was lots of faunal changes as you got into how Creek, where you had like Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus and things like that. So very interesting as well. And it shows how the environment changed coming up to the end of the Cretaceous when we get T-Rex and we know how that changed. But yeah, another really, really great mod by Master Dude. And I like this uh, Walking with Dinosaurs one. I think it <coughs> come out rather nicely. And then you can see all these other colors that come with it and all the different versions. I like the pattern, but on the green one, that looks really nice. I like this one as well. Uh, really nice colors as well. Definitely, definitely really cool. So we're going to let you run off and do your thing, of course. Are you going to go anywhere near the hatchery? We don't want that. So next up, as I mentioned, we've got another Tyrannosaurus. We've got uh, Tuspedosaurus Tauruses. So this is another mod done by the wonderful Jagged Fang Designs coming back again. So this is the Speedosaurus uh, Tauruses, which name means Frightful Lizard. Uh, these guys are a genus of Tyrannosaur or dinosaur that lived, as I mentioned, with this, uh, Gorgosaurus and Laramidia between 78 to 74 million years ago, lived during the late uh, Cretaceous period. There are three named species, and I went over them a few episodes ago with uh, High Swap Trees to Speedosaurini pack. But this one is based on Tauruses, which is the type species. So that's kind of the earliest one that was found. And I believe it's kind of middle in the stratigraphic. Uh, no, it's the, also the uh, oldest in the stratigraphic as well. So yeah, that's right. That's right. So the first one found, but also the oldest stratigraphically. So it's the oldest in terms of time. So the type specimen includes a partial skull and forelum and all that. And it was discovered in 1912 near Stephenville, Alberta. And was... Uh, Found by Charles Bottom Sternberg, who thought it was a new species of Gorgosaurus, actually, until it was uh, then. Uh, then in 1970, uh, Dave, uh, Dale Russell actually described it as a new genus, the Speedosaurus, which means the frightful lizard. And the type species, uh, Taurosus, means brawny, so it's the brawny, fright, um, or muscular, frightful lizard as well. And aside from this type, there's only uh, there's one other well-known specimen, and a couple of other complete ones that have like a uh, big brains as well. And it also suggested that a specimen of Albertosaurus may have been another species of uh, Taurus. Let's increase that, but it's not universally accepted. So taxonomy being taxonomy. And as I mentioned, there are assigned species, Taurus being the youngest, and then Wilsoni, I believe, being in the middle, and Horneri being the uh, latest. Yeah, Wilsoni being the middle, and Horneri being the latest. That is correct. Cool. So they were very large by modern predator standards, but it's kind of one of the, it's still one of the larger Tyrannosaurus, but it's nowhere near as big or in the same league as things like T uh, Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus. So adults reached about 8.5 to 9 meters or 20, 20, 28 to 30 feet long and reached a height of about, a uh, hip height of about 2 meters or about 7 feet and a body mass of 2 to 3 tons. Had a much more bulkier skull than uh, uh, Gorgosaurus and Albertosaurus. So had a bigger skull that reached a, more than a meter and quite large boxy skulls that were getting bigger and bigger. It looked more resemble kind of like uh, Tyrannosaurus being bigger and bulky and had a little bit of a stronger bite force proportionally. But its body was pretty similar to most other Tyrannosaurus, you know, with the two fingers and the big round body and things like that. It wasn't too different. And there has been some debate on how to depict it. Uh, there's been, by, from a comparison of like where on the teeth of Diplodosaurus, uh, it's can there's been studies that suggest that it would have had lips very much like uh, reptiles uh, and uh, then crocodiles which lack lips, but there has been some studies on why they all may have lips, but it's a very conscientious thing in dinosaurs, though most people agree with lips and I'm a lip guy. Though I don't want to hear debates about it in the comments because it kind of never goes anywhere. But anyway, it is in the subfamily Tyrannosauridae, so it is closely related or to things such as like Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus, and the next T-Rex will be talk, uh, Tyrannosaurus, uh, Tyrannosaurus species we'll be talking about soon. But there's a mention of all sorts of different species. But there has been a study last year that suggests they would have all overlapped and potentially may not even been different species. That's taxonomy being taxonomy for you. Still cool anyway. Very similar to uh, Gorgosaurus, very good senses, very big mouths for biting things and would have actually used touch for potentially like um 
and ISOs potentially like uh, crocodiles to detect uh, temperature and jaw movements and things like that, which is cool. And there is evidence of social behavior potentially within Gorgosaurus, I mean, Displetosaurus. Uh, bite marks uh, that have been seen in other Tyrannosaurs, that means they're probably what a social. And it's actually seen in a lot of other Tyrannosaurs as well, and other theropods that may have been in what condition, or potentially for dominance within the group. So it would have been a way of fighting, which is quite cool, and establishing dominance. So face biting was very likely a very common thing in theropod dinosaurs. Other evidence suggests to live in social group, there's been bone beds found with individuals of different ages, and but whether they came together and hunted together, we really don't know. Uh, it's one of those things. And in terms of life history, as I mentioned, they would have grown quite fast once they reached that kind of late teen stage. They would have put on about 180 kilograms a year and would have been about 1,800 kilograms as adults, uh, which is interesting. So they would have grown a little bit faster. Uh, than Gorgosaurus, but a lot slower than Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus like grew so fast during its 10 years, it would have got up to like six tons real quickly. But in terms of paleoecology, it's from the late, uh, late Campanian stage of the Cretaceous from about 78 to 74 million years ago. Lived in the uh, middle of the Cretaceous, it would have been lived in Western Jerry Seaway, Vata Montana, Alberta, places like that. Interesting as well, they would have lived in floodplains, very similar habitat to Gorgosaurus as well. Uh, also, Two Medicine, Judith River, has a lot of very interesting animals like Brachy, uh, Brachylophosaurus, uh, Cornosaurus, and Albertoceratops, a lot of other same species that you find in other formations as well. There's Xenosaurs, Pachycephalosaurs, and Chylosaurs, and Othosaurs, one of the Mimosaurs, like Sapatis as well. And in terms of non-dinosaur faunas, there would have been lots of like fishes, and crocodilians, and reptiles, and amphibians. Uh, very similar to what would be live in the same environments as Gorgosaurus. And, as I mentioned, coexist with Gorgosaurus, so I don't need to explain that again. But, another great mod by uh, Jagged Fang Designs. So, last but certainly not least, we've got everyone's the third uh, big T-Rex, or big Tyrannosaur. So, you know, we got Tarbosaurus in-game and Tyrannosaurus in-game. But we have got one missing, that's a mod done by Husquark Tree. He did a really wonderful job. We have got... Zhusheng Tyrannus. So here we are. Here, we'll have a look at you because you look nice. Let me let you... I think that looks better. All right. So this is Zhusheng Tyrannus, which means Zhusheng Tyrant. So this is a genus of Tyrannosaurid theropod, and is a very close relative of T-Rex, and the subfamily Tyrannosaurine, uh, and is named, the full name is Zhusheng Tyrannus Magnus. Uh, so, oh, Magus. So this was first described by David uh, Hone, uh, Ken Wang, and a bunch of other scientists, or Zhusheng, uh, Zing Yu, is found as well. Uh, in 2011, and the type species is Zhuxiang Mangus, which was derived from the word Zhuxiang, which refers to its type locality where it was found, and then tyrant, so it's the Zhuxiang tyrant, and its and because of its phylogenetic position, uh, position within Tyrannosaurus, so it's very closely relative to T-Rex, and its scientific name, uh, or specific name, Magus, means great because it was quite a large animal. So it's the least known of the three Tyrannosaurs, the three big Tyrannosaurs. It's only known from the holotype, which was a maxilla and dentary that was discovered in 2010 and is currently housed in the Zhuxing Dinosaur Museum. And what we have of this was dated at the Campanian stage, which was believed to be about 73 million years old. And a second one was found in the Jajra's Inquiry, but has not been as, uh, assigned to Zootyrannus. Uh, so it's been in that as well. So it's been it could be another Tyrannosaurid. But um, this formation is a very interesting formation as well. This is where Chitungosaurus and uh, Sinoceratops come from, and there's also Ankylosaurs. So it very likely would have been a floodplain, almost like the Asian version of Owl Creek, and would have actually has some of the highest concentration of dinosaur bones in the world. So that's very interesting as well. So Zuching Tyrannus itself is a large carnivorous dinosaur, and the holotype is believed to be very similar in size to Tarbosaurus. So about 11 meters long at about 5 tons in body mass, and the dentaries, the holotype's dentary is only a little bit smaller than the Sus, which is a large Tyrannosaurus um, uh, 
corresponding bones. So the bones in Zhujing Tyrannus compared to Su are a little bit smaller. So very much like a Rex size, the size of a potentially average Rex. And it's, there's not many much that can tell it apart uh, that I can explain here without going really technical, but mainly just where it is and things like that as well. So it's possible there's 70 isolated teeth. There has been people that have given the name Tyrannosaurus, it's just another species of Tyrannosaurus, but then as often, uh, Duchinoranus has kind of been put in its own genus. But a phylogenetic analysis also looked at these guys and suggests that these guys would have been a sister taxon to Tyrannosaurus, but also suggests that uh, Zuchin Tyrannus and the other currently known Asian Tyrannosaurus were part of a radiation uh, that descended from the same one that gave rise to Tarbosaurus. Or could be the other way around. There is the hypothesis that T-Rex evolved from in Asia, or its ancestors came from Asia, went to North America, and outcompeted Splitosaurus and Gorgosaurus and uh, Albertosaurus and became T-Rex. But there's also the reverse argument as well, which is interesting. So uh, more recent shows it is uh, clay containing the restricting gene at Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus. So it's a little bit older, but um, would have been like an early big relative, like the first of the big ones because it's companion age. But Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus are both Maastrichtian, so it's kind of the first big Tyrannosaur, and it would have uh, split off before Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus got the really big guys. But yeah, really, really cool. Another really great mod by Hoss Rock Tree, and nice to see like a, uh, the trifecta of all the big theropods getting in the game, which is cool. Another nice mod, I definitely love nice mod. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to end it here. I think we did a good job. So, um, yeah, I uh, really, really, really hope you guys have enjoyed this video today. I hope you guys like and subscribe. Always remember to hit the little bell icon to get notified of the only thing. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, hope you guys like and subscribe, and bye-bye.